Hello, this is Dr. Oviedo. Today, we are going to review histology of the normal liver. As background knowledge, you should have a good understanding of abdominal anatomy and of liver anatomy. We are going to start the video by reviewing the basic functions of the liver. Then, we are going to review basic anatomy of the liver with attention to the blood vessels and bile ducts. We are then going to review the histology of the normal liver, which is the main purpose of this video. The liver is a highly complex organ with many functions. One of them is to metabolize and store digestive products from the intestines. Another is to produce bile. What is the purpose of bile? It is a route for the body to eliminate bilirubin and cholesterol and it helps digest lipids. The liver is also involved in many other complex metabolic functions. It detoxifies substances including drugs and produces blood components. We are only going to refer to the first two functions in the rest of the video since they are relevant to basic histology. Here is the liver. The liver receives venous blood from the intestines, pancreas, spleen, and stomach. These blue lines represent venous blood draining these organs. This venous blood enters the liver through the portal vein. The liver also receives arterial blood from the hepatic artery, which branches from the celiac artery. Blood leaves the liver through the hepatic veins, which enter the inferior vena cava. This is a simplified view of the anatomy of the liver, simply to give the histology context. I've drawn the portal vein, hepatic artery, and hepatic vein to appear behind the liver since anatomically they enter and exit the liver through the posterior regions of the liver. Okay, let's go on to the bile ducts. Here is the liver. Here are the gallbladder and bile ducts. The purpose of the gallbladder is to store bile. I have drawn these as appearing to be behind the liver since they are located on the posterior and inferior regions of the liver. The purpose of the bile ducts is to transport bile from the liver to the gallbladder and duodenum. Let's name the bile ducts. This is the right hepatic duct. This is the left hepatic duct. This is the common hepatic duct. This is the cystic duct. And this is the common bile duct. The common bile duct enters the duodenum. This is an arrow showing the bile entering the duodenum. All of these named bile ducts are known as extrahepatic bile ducts. They are also referred to as the large bile ducts. This is in contrast to the intrahepatic bile ducts, also known as small bile ducts, which are not drawn on this picture. We will see the intrahepatic ducts later in the video. Now, let's review a drawing of the histology of the liver. The liver is extremely complex, and this is a very simplified drawing of the histology of the liver so that we can begin to learn the names of the structures. This drawing corresponds to microscopic structures in the liver. Imagine if you lived in a cartoon world. This is what you would see if you looked in your cartoon microscope. Here on the left is the portal tract. This area here is referred to as the lobule. It contains hepatocytes and sinusoids. The beige boxes with round circles in the middle are of course the hepatocytes, which are the main type of cells in the liver. And this over here is the central vein. Let's go over these structures in more detail. The portal tract is a connective tissue region that contains the portal vein, arteriole, and bile duct. The portal vein is technically a venule, but most people refer to it as the portal vein. This portal vein is, of course, a tiny branch of the large portal vein that we saw entering the liver a few slides back. The arteriole is, of course, a tiny branch of the hepatic artery. This bile duct is an intrahepatic bile duct, which is the same thing as a small bile duct. The small bile ducts coalesce and join to form the right and left hepatic ducts. One more thing about the portal tract. The hepatocytes which surround the portal tract 
get a special name, the limiting plate. One more thing about the hepatocytes. The hepatocytes are epithelial cells. This may seem confusing because I am sure you remember from histology that epithelial cells generally cover surfaces. So how come hepatocytes are epithelial cells since they don't cover a surface? Hepatocytes are derived from the foregut embryologically. The foregut is lined by a surface epithelium, so the liver is an epithelial tissue because it is derived from the foregut. The sinusoids are a vascular space in between the hepatocytes. The central veins coalesce to form the hepatic vein, which leaves the liver. So, how does the blood flow through the liver? The portal vein gives venous blood in this direction into the sinusoids. The arteriole gives arterial blood in this direction into the sinusoids. The blood then mixes and enters the central vein. Next, I want to show you how the bile is made by the hepatocytes and then enters the bile duct in this direction. The name of the tube that carries the bile in between the hepatocytes is bile canaliculus. People usually use the plural, which is canaliculi. The bile canaliculi compose a highly complex system of anastomosing channels. This drawing is a highly simplified version of a bile canaliculus. The very last thing we are going to label is the Kupfer cell. The Kupfer cell is a type of macrophage which resides in the sinusoids. I think of macrophages as part of a cleanup crew, since their job is to eat debris. The cut for cells job in the liver is to remove damaged red blood cells, bacteria, or debris from the sinusoids. Okay, now that we have become experts on drawings of the liver, let's go on to the real liver. Here is a digital slide of a large piece of normal liver. Here in the middle of the section, you can see there is a large portal tract which I am outlining with my little hand. I want to look at the liver at high power right here. First, I am going to outline the portal tract with my pen. Now I am going to outline the central vein. All the other regions correspond to the lobules. Let's look at the structures inside the portal tract. Here is the portal vein. Here is the arteriole. Here is the bile duct. Remember from the drawing that the hepatocytes which surround the portal tract are called the limiting plate. I am outlining the limiting plate right now. Let's take a closer look at the hepatocytes and sinusoids. Here you can see there are rows of hepatocytes. I'm going over one row with my little hand. Here is another row, and here is another row. I am outlining one hepatocyte with my pen. And now I'm outlining another hepatocyte with my pen. And now I'm going to outline a sinusoid with my pen. The blood would flow in this direction from the portal tracts towards the central vein. The cup for cells are located in the sinusoids. You can't really see them very well on routine preparations, but this cell over here in the sinusoid is probably a cup for cell. In between the hepatocytes are the bile canaliculi. You really can't see them on routine sections, but if you could, there would be one right here. The bile would flow in this direction towards the portal tract. Remember, the liver is a complex three-dimensional structure, and we are looking at very thin two-dimensional slices, so you can't really see everything on these slides as well as we could on our drawings. Okay, after reviewing this video, you should understand the basic functions of the liver. You should also understand basic anatomy of the liver, including blood vessels and bile ducts. You should understand histology of the normal liver. And you should understand the following terminology.
portal tract, portal vein, arteriole, bile duct, limiting plate, central vein, sinusoids, hepatocyte, and cup for cell. Okay, the liver is a fascinating organ and I hope this video has served as a good introduction. Good luck with your studies of the liver.